For those of you who are new to rowing or even those of you who aren't, we're going to take the time today to break down the rowing stroke so you can learn proper rowing mechanics both on the drive and on the recovery. So we're going to make it as simple as we possibly can. We're going to speak in very generic terms, arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms. That's the basics. Those are the basic terms that you're going to need to know to understand the rowing stroke from the catch to the finish during the drive and during the recovery. So again, arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. So going to put your feet onto the foot stretchers. You are going to loosen up the straps and you are going to slide your feet into the straps and tighten. The best place to start in terms of foot placement is to have that strap resting across the widest part, the pad of your foot. When it comes to adjusting the footboards for our feet, pull the tongue up here, you can slide it up and down. So what we're looking to do is slide it into the position. I'm on five on both sides from here. Want to loosen that strap. I'm going to slide the foot forward and in, then set it down. I'm going to take that strap, I'm going to pull it across the widest part of our foot. I'm going to do the same on the other side, widest part of our foot, and we're good to go. Once we feel that our feet are strapped into the machine, I'm going to go ahead and grab the handle. We're going to extend back to the finish of the rowing stroke. I need your legs to be straight. I need your body to be leaned slightly back, core engaged, and I need the handle drawn to the chest. Bottom of the sternum, top of the rib cage. Notice my shoulders are nice and relaxed. Shoulders are down, elbows are back past the body. From here, let's get started. We're gonna start, arms out, body forward, roll up with the legs, then legs press, lean back with the body, arms bringing the handle to chest. Again, arms, body, legs, Legs, body, arms. Arms, body, legs. Legs, body, arms. That's the basic pattern. Now, as you can tell, we're rowing like robots. That's not what we're looking to do. In rowing, we wanna smooth that out, so we're gonna blend it, but the sequencing stays the same. So as the arms are starting to come out, then the body's gonna slowly start to come forward, and once the body's forward, we're gonna release the legs, and then we're gonna press with the legs first, start with the back opening and draw the arms. So arms, body, and legs, legs, body, and arms. Arms, body, and legs, legs, body, and arms. So at full speed, arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms, arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms, arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms. So you can see there's a flow to it, but there's also a sequence. The arms start before the body starts to come over. So the arms are gonna to start to come out before that body comes over. The legs are gonna release. Then we're gonna press, lean back, and squeeze. Arms forward, body forward, then the knees release, pressing, leaning, and squeezing. Let's break it down one more time. Start robotically. Arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms. Arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms. Arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms. Now let's blend it a bit, keeping the sequencing the same. Keeping the order, arms, then body, then legs on the recovery legs, then body, then arms on the drive. So here we go. Arms, body, and legs. Legs, body, arms. Arms, body, legs. Legs, body, arms. Good. One point that I want to draw awareness to is that point once the arms have come out from the finish and the body has come forward. We call this the body over position. This is the most important position and hardest to learn for any novice. The inclination for most people once they come to the finish is to release the knees 
and allow the body and knees and arms all to come forward at the same time. You've seen this guy at the gym, right? <laughs> wow. The point is the hardest thing for novices to learn coming through, setting that body, then releasing the knees. Set the body, then release the knees. We do this for a number of reasons. One, if the body and arms are set forward, it's much easier for us to just roll into the front end. If the body and arms are not set, as the body and arms are coming forward, we're starting to roll, we have to use that much more energy to throw ourselves into the front end. And generally that ends up with us arriving at the front end and diving into the front end, right? So we press through, if we do it wrong, it looks like this. It's a lot of effort, specifically on the core, to get myself back into the front end. So again, setting that body up before we release the knees, finish the stroke, set. Now all I have to do is just roll freely into the front end of the screen. Much easier. reason that we want to achieve that body over position before releasing the knees on the recovery is because we want to be in the proper position to press out of the front end onto the drive. So as you saw, when we did it wrong, we had that tendency to come in and arrive at the front end in a very exposed position, really putting the back in a dangerous spot where it's going to have to take the load. The shoulders are up near the ears. So we're not getting good connection in our lats. We're leaving way too much work to the back and putting a lot of undue pressure on the system. What we wanna do by setting ourselves up in this position, it's not only easier to roll into the front end, it allows us to arrive at the catch in the strongest position to push. From here, I'm in a very strong position to be able to push out of the front end. So again, hardest thing, seen it time and time again with novice rowers, the hardest thing is to fight that inclination to allow the knees to pop up on the recovery, on the return, before that body set forward. So as such, the one drill that we're going to equip you with today is going to be your body over pause drill, okay? The reason that we're going to do this, we're going to break the rowing stroke down at the pause point. So we're going to row, and the reason we're doing this, from this position, we pause, we get that feeling, there's some pull and hamstring, feeling them elongate, feeling that low back nice and firm, body's in a good set position, and all we have to do from here is just roll in and press out. Pause, feel that positioning, chest forward, chest up, pivoting, from the pelvis, from the lower body. That tilt comes from the low body. It's not a reach from the upper body. It's a tilt from the lower body. From here, roll, press, pause. Roll, press, pause. Roll, press. So that drill once you've mastered legs, body, arms, arms, body, legs, and feel confident in that movement and in that sequencing, I suggest you move into that body over pause drill to make sure that you're really hammering home the point that we don't want to get stuck back here as the legs are rising up, causing a lot of undue pressure and putting us in a bad position a weakened and compromised position at the front end of the rowing stroke. So again, bringing it back to the beginning, we're at the finish of the rowing stroke, core's nice and solid and strong, shoulders are relaxed, elbows are back past the body, that allows us to use our shoulders and our lats, not just our biceps, right? Don't want it just stuck out here using our biceps, that's no good for anybody, it's good for the beach muscles, it's not good for power and speed on the machine. Elbows back and through, feeling those shoulder blades 
pulling together behind you, those elbows back past the body, core engaged. Now let's just row freely in your mind. Repeat, arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms. Rowing's like a light switch. You want to think you're turning it on during the drive, driving with force, driving with acceleration, driving with speed. Once the rowing stroke's done, and we're on the recovery, head back to the front end of the rowing stroke. It's about turning that light switch off. So it's about floating. It's about freedom of movement. Long, strong strokes. Accelerate. Fly. Accelerate. Fly. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. Press. Flow. Press. Flow. Press. Flow. So that's it in a nutshell. You're probably already rowing better than I ever have. It's only going to take you a few sessions, two, three, four sessions, to get the basics down in the rowing stroke. But I promise you, if you're a student of the craft, it is going to take you the rest of your rowing career to perfect the rowing stroke, which is one of the things that makes rowing such a great exercise. It's such a technical endeavor. It's a practice in mindfulness, not only physical execution, but mental execution and technical execution. It's about efficiency. It's about knowing how to turn the stroke on, knowing how to turn it off, on during the drive with that great acceleration, off on the recovery. They call it the recovery for a reason. It's not the work your way back to the front end. We're recovering through the front end of that rowing stroke. So again, breaking it all back down to where we started from in very, very simple terms, arms, body, legs as we float in, legs, body, arms as we move out. Master that body over pause position. Once you've mastered that, you will have cleared a major hurdle uh, in rowing, which is every novice's inclination and desire to release their knees from the back end before that handle gets past the knees. Releasing those knees before the body and the handle get past the knees. So when you do body over pause, make that concentration tilting from down low, arms come out, we tilt from down low, and you'll see it was the tilt that got the handle past the knees. That tilt brings the handle past the knees, brings the shoulders slightly in front of the hips, puts me in a very, very strong position to be able to roll in and press out really strong. So take these tips with you, watch this video a few times. Feel free to ask me any questions you might have. Please be sure to check out other videos we have that will help you improve your power, your technique, and your efficiency on the rowing machine.